Q&A. I'm going to have to probably end uh, right on the money because uh, I'm going to have to chaperone the kiddos. My wife's freaking out. <laughs> Kids are all having they're a lot of fun. I'm just uh, I'm a lot more patient with children than my wife. So she's like, she's like, they won't stop screaming. <laughs> I don't like the kids, man. All right. So anyways, ask questions. And by the way, yeah, I still have to do a makeup, the makeup one hour for you guys that, uh, because I lost the, the video, I think it was last week. My bad on that. Yeah, I think something was going on. And I think the first clue is when Mike was telling me that when, like, was I recording and I checked and they said it was recording. But I might have, I left my computer on longer than I normally do. Because usually I, I turn my computer off and restart it uh, every day. But that day, I didn't. It was on for like a day and a half. And sometimes when that happens, my computer gets real weird. Not sure why, but it does. Like like this uh, morning, the Wacom tablet services were, was not working. So I had to do it. So I, did, I already turned my computer off before class. But I left it on overnight again. So the videos will render. But anyway, technical stuff. Who cares? Just want to apologize. Uh, but we'll make up for that time. With that being said, what questions does y'all may have? Oh, hey, AJ. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, remember, I think it was last week when you set to work on the workflow and stuff, and yeah, uh, you had to switch between layers, uh, hockey or whatever? Well, I don't have a hockey to switch between layers. Is it just, is it, because I, like, search it up, it's the square, it's a square bracket and an alt, right? The uh, one that you use? No, I don't use a, a hockey specifically, I just press the move tool. And then control click the layer that I want. So, oh, okay. So it's really it's, okay. it's more intuitive that way because then you can make um, more like multiple layers. Let me use like right, right, and then I just control click. It's just easier, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, and it starts getting fishier when you, it starts getting real fishy when you have um, like a gradient layers, you know, when there's a little bit of yeah. radiation, because then like that gradation might get picked up instead. Uh, but I, I just like to select it when it gets to that point. You know, like at, at that point, it's like it's not important to be that efficient, right? Uh, yeah. I definitely encourage being more and more efficient. That's not what I'm trying to not say. But um, I don't think it's as important as some people might think it is. Okay. I just thought there was, like, a hotkey for that, and I tried to, like, find out what it was. And then oh, I found out that there's a hotkey to, like, switch between, like, up and down your layers. But it was, like, on the other side of the keyboard. And I didn't like that, because I usually stick to the left side of the keyboard. So what, what is the hotkey? What is the name of that function? Uh, it's, it's, like... Because what you can do is you can reverse engineer. You can find out what it is. Find out whether it's in application menus. Yeah, menus I tried to find tools. it, and I was going to ask you... Because it's not there anymore. It's not there. And you can't, oh. like, rebind it. So I was like... Does AJ have a, like a special secret function that he does? The, if there, you'd be surprised at some things that you can actually bind. Uh, I would reinvestigate that. Is what I'm trying to okay. say. Cool. Yeah, you might be shocked. What's up? Uh, that question. When you started with painting, do you have a lighting in mind immediately? Uh, the no, not not entirely. Like in this one specifically, I, I kind of do. It's coming from the top. But normally I don't really. I, I focus mostly on just the design. Like right now I wasn't doing that. I was focusing too much on like just being fancy with my texture brushes. In fact, I've been too caught up in like focusing on my texture brushes too much. So I, I, I just right now it's just kind of like, it's like, oh, I should stop that. Let's just paint something, you know? 
Uh, like right now, and you guys caught me like in a like uh, because my mind has just been awakened, and so I'm just constantly trying to do stuff, right? And normally, whenever I do demos or live streams or whatever, uh, I'm already I'm just kind of like doing a lot of autopilot stuff, which usually always comes out to be impressive, right? And I realized that I probably should like even like this morning's class I was doing some stuff that it's like it's like testing stuff out, and I feel I should just do that on a different time. That way you guys can well specifically so you guys can learn a little bit of like how I paint things as well, right? Um, but it also is pretty cool to just watch and see me me struggle because it, it opens your eyes to the idea that I, I also struggle and learn things too. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to design and remember it at the same time as kind of doing multiple things at once. Yeah, I think I actually answered the same question in the morning class. So, and I, I went a little elaborate too on that. But the the short of it, it would be is that, like, uh, and I would recommend you watching the morning class when you get a chance so you can see kind of what I was talking about. But it is during their QA. But overall, I don't really, um, I don't really think too much about lighting um like i'm not like actively thinking like lighting 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 like i'm just painting and then the kind of things that are in my mind for instance right now a lot of what's on my mind is just design stuff like i'm just trying to make a really cool thing and, and there's a few things that are floating in my mind that like, like i saw that izzy madrano painting i was thinking man izzy so good and I used to work with that guy, and I used to just look over and just be inspired every day. And it's cool to kind of look back and just see a new image, like those super small speculars. I forgot that's like a thing he does. That's something that I used to love to try to do in my work. And so now I'm like, I want to do it right now with this thing. Like, I was going to do like a more. I, I, I need a, I was, I'm getting into trying to paint more with texture brushes. I do this every so often. And I've been getting better and better and better, but it's all in moderation. I don't really in any hurry. But I'm in an experimental stage right now of my painting. I like I feel so much awakened that I can learn new things before I couldn't, because I was just so so distracted with my goddamn headaches, you know. Like I do like these clay painting things where I take clay that like me and my kids are doing, like Play-Doh, and then I take pictures of them. And I, I was just shocked, like, I was, like, taking pictures, and I was just using, like, my cell phone and, like, a flashlight, a high-powered flashlight, and the photo looked fine. I was like, this is actually workable. I could work with this, <laughs> you know? It's, like, dynamically lit and stuff. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, usually flashlight is just the way. Yeah, like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really about the lighting <laughs> and the composition. Like where you're putting the lights, because the thing is already um, the thing is already three dimensional. What? Who's that now? Peace out. Oh, James is leaving. Later. Um. So Excuse like, me? I have like this image of like this creature design that like I took a photo of. Oh, here, here's this one. Right? And like I sculpted it out like the Play-Doh that my kids are using, you know? And I was going to paint over this and actually make like a... I was going to actually try to make a really cool creature out of it. I was going to knock it into black and white, though. Because I've been painting with the color, but I'm going to try to start from black and white. You know, my, my daughter took some pictures of plants and stuff, too. I was going to like use these as reference and just paint from, from back. Yeah. And then like my son did like a little clay wall thingy. And I thought that was cute, so I was like, I'm going to draw my little Godzilla <laughs> clay thing, put next to it. <laughs> and then my son made this, and I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, I could probably make a creature out of that. You know? Mm. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm in an experimental stage, is what I'm trying to say. And so I'm trying to practice a lot right now when I learn some more 3D. But I should just paint something that will be cool right now. So characters with multiple arms, 
that are holding something or folding something. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, bud? Um, I have a question regarding, like, for example, showing some work to clients. Uh -huh. <clears throat> what is it better? Having a lot of detail in your concepts or sure. good lighting? Uh, it, it all depends. So, if it's just concept art, it doesn't have to be lit at all. Uh, if okay. it's concept art, it should just be concept art. It should be something that, because it's not the final product. It's just an example of what needs to be made. You get it? So yeah, having it just drawn well, you don't even have to render it sometimes, you know? And that's why I said it all depends, because some clients are okay with just like really loose line art. And if you have a good modeling team, right, that can take a like loose art line art and they can just run with it, then um, great. But if you don't, then, you know, um, you're going to have to really give them all the information, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. Like, here, let me give you an example. So I'm going to... Some reference. Say that, say that again? So what about the textures or some materials? Like So I, I trust uh, I, I, I trust it. I hired him based off of what he had in his portfolio. Mm -hmm. And what's great about that is like I just link one of his images that he already had and say try to replicate what you did here. But for us. And he does that and then right. he achieved it. Um because it all depends. Like I said, some people don't need that. Some people do. Like I, I hire people that clearly can do the work that I need them to do. And it's been working out great because I don't have to art direct them at all. Like I just, I'm more like an art manager. And if I have to art direct them, I can. I just paint over and, and talk to them on Skype if I have to, right? If it's like really hard to convey what I'm trying to explain. One of the modelers, like for instance, I just kept on trying to like have them design and design and they just weren't doing it. So I had to literally paint a concept that had, there was no confusion what needed to be done. You understand? Like I had to literally paint it exactly the way that I, and I said, don't have any creative liberties, make this exactly, <laughs> you know? Like do yeah, not yeah. deviate at all. Um, so it's, it's like, you, you gotta know who you're working with. Like I said, so it's, it's better to have range is what I'm trying to say. Um, like it's yeah, not about, it's not about having uh, detailed work versus not detailed work. The the real the real thing you should do is just have a range of skill that you can do super detailed work if necessary, right? And um, right. and so like uh, I think like kind of the root of that question too, where that, a lot of that question spawns from, is this idea of like, well, what what is like the minimum like what is best for me to do? Like what is the minimum effort that I really need to kind of have in my portfolio and i'm saying don't aim for the minimum aim for the maximum right yeah exactly and the maximum yeah. is super detailed amazing artwork right mm -hmm. and and loose stuff will just come naturally as a product of painting really well by the way you understand what i mean, what I mean by this meaning that yeah, like yeah, yeah. your sketches if you can render really well your loose sketches will look phenomenal like this, for example. Yeah, like <laughs> this, for example, exactly. Like where I don't, when I'm just sketching, my sketches will come out really great, right? Yeah. Um, because I can also take them pretty far if I needed to, right? It just takes more time and takes a little bit more effort, but it's worth doing, and it's like, and you'll you'll understand once you get there too. You're like, oh man, yeah, it's totally worth like pushing myself. And I say this for all styles of artwork. You know, now there are people who just focus on like this more stylized stuff and they just stick with their ways and, and they accomplish great quality in their work too. You know, these people will become great artists, people that are admired by many people in the industry, you know? So it's not like it's mm -hmm. impossible. Uh, it's not like it's impossible to just learn sketchiness and get really good over time. Of course not. But I'm saying... But I'm saying, as a, as you guys are my students, you know, don't do that. Like, push yourself, <laughs> okay? 
Like you, yeah, yeah. you'll 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 accomplish so much more um, from your work if you do. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, the thing is that I love like detailing things, but I struggle with timing. You know, so that's probably one of my my main issues. Like when to stop. You know. Mhm. Mm then make a timer and then stop then. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been doing keep... that. I... It's been like really, really great for me. Okay, yeah. See, so it's yeah. like if you don't know when to stop, then create an artificial time to stop. You know, like if you say, I'm going to take a, a painting and to finish, I'm going to spend only, uh, I'm going to spend only, you know, 20 hours to finish this painting, then only spend 20 hours. You know, and in fact, you should train yourself. Uh, you should practice that, you know. Like you should do like side studies where you you do twenty long twenty hour long paintings that take over like a few days of time to do, right? And then after twenty twenty hours is gone, like ask yourself what was the main struggles? Why did it take you so long to get to certain parts of your painting? What could you have done differently? You know, we've been doing like thirty minutes to one hour like you know sessions whatever, but you should also do longer sessions like a little more marathon length ones you know just to see how far a 20 hour painting looks like for you and what you can do to improve it all right yeah that's like a really good tip thanks yeah of course yeah and like i said to, to answer the first element of the question it all depends on the quality and who you're working for like i said some people are totally okay like some art directors are really good at just you know using um uh, very subtle drawings to, and then using that and being able to convey what needs to be done to the next person down on the line. Uh, other people, like you just got to literally hold their hands every second of the way. Like I'm trying to not hire people like that. I'm trying to hire people that if I give them art direction, uh, I can count on them. Do I have to go in there and babysit them every second? Like, no. But do I have to do it every once in a while? Yeah, of course. You know, like not everybody's going to hit the mark 100%. And what my... A good art director should do and I learned this this is not me like tuning my own horn this is actually something I learned from my art director an art director should be able to convey and, and tell you exactly what you did wrong and what you can do to improve it and then more importantly trust that you will improve it and not only do what they are asking but bring something new to the table and trusting that trust in your artist is big because like uh, my art director my favorite one Jonathan Ruby did that he trusted me a lot and uh but he i remember one one moment he was like giving me feedback and then he stopped and he's like but you know what he said but what do you really think like why why did you I was like why did you think that you know the shape would be really good like what was your what was your goal and then i explained it to him right and then he's just like you know i think i'm wrong i think my criticism was wrong i think you're right i think that actually was pretty cool so we'll just keep it in there and i was like what and he's like, yeah, dude. He's like, I think you're right. I think it's better this way. And I was like, well, you know, I can still do your thing. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll try to keep the essence of what I was trying to do before. Because I think you you have some legitimacy too. You know, we'll do both. He's like, this, like, that's the whole power of iteration. It's like, just do both. And I do a combination of both ideas. And he's like, all right, it sounds great. Let's do that then. You know? And I did that and then turned it around and it ended up, being uh, the case where both of our, our our criticisms, or both of our feedback was essential and it, it was powerful, and we showed it to the team and everyone liked it, you know. And so, like, um, yeah, like for instance, like like some of the models I was teaching, I was te literally teaching them, well, very much like what I was teaching you guys, you know. And I think that's what a good art director should be doing is is not necessarily dictating. What everyone should be doing, they should be educating and then um, encouraging them to make the best designs that person's possible. And I think uh, when you hire people, you should hire people that are clearly qualified for the work that you want them to do. Not because they have a piece of artwork that you like, but because they, they have demonstrated in their portfolio something that is, that is what is necessary. Because then you can count on them to do it quickly and effectively. And so when you guys are working on your portfolios, that's why I always encourage you guys to have work that actually resonates with you and your personality. Because when you get a job, you'll feel very comfortable, especially when you're getting art directed. You won't feel like you can't accomplish the deed. You'll feel like you can. And trust me, because I've been in situations where I, 
I could not accomplish the deed. And they only wanted to hire me because I was a good artist, but not because I was able to do what they were looking for. And it, it, was, it was a bad situation for both parties. Uh, AJ? Yeah. Uh, I have a question about uh, making like your own IP thing. Because yeah, I know uh, that you did that uh, Heavens and Hell, Heavens Hell yeah. uh, art book a while ago. Yeah, yeah totally. I saw it. I saw it like way after it got kickstarted. <laughs> is, is, is there still copies? Is there still copies of it around, right? Oh yeah, um, you can actually buy them from the uh, Design Studio Press. I actually don't own the rights to them anymore because I really did oh, really? a terrible job of the Kickstarter. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really flopped that. Still dealing with the the backlash of that, but. Oh okay. But you can get a copy, and if you wait long enough, because I'm sending out, uh, I'm still sending out a lot of the the hardcovers, and the hardcovers are unique to the Kickstarter. But a lot of people kind of backed out of the the project, and so I will be having a lot of copies actually left over that I can sell or give to people, right? So if you just hang tight, I can I'll have some copies, but I have to make sure I have copies for everybody who still wants one, right? Okay. Cool. But uh, yeah. Right, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And... In terms of making your IP, like you can you can start today. There's no reason to wait. And I, I actually highly advise uh, against using any kind of um, crowdfunding because I, I discovered the, one of the main reasons why the crowdfunding uh, didn't work so well is because I wasn't qualified. I didn't know how to do an art book. Uh, and when you start to get a, a lot of popularity and recognition for it, uh, then you, your standard of what it should be starts to increase, and then you start to... Um, overthink it analysis paralysis right and then that's what happened and then time goes by and money starts to disappear and you start to realize like oh my gosh like what's going on like i need to get this done but then you know life happens and life just kept on happening for me and i, I was uh falling behind and now uh i made another ip uh independent of that one uh, without any crowd for funding, without any kind of like in, even agenda to make a new thing, I just made a thing with my friend. We just worked together on it, right? And it just started with me drawing like a weird drawing, like you see, like right here, and then giving it to my friend, and then he would come up with a story. I'm sure you've seen some of those, and then yeah. we put them together. And that's kind of the product of what we, we came up with. And we love it. We think it's a lot of fun. And then we're like, okay, well, let's do 25 stories. Once we do 25, you know, um, let's make a let's make a little book out of it. And then we got to 25, like in three or four months. And I was like, you know, let's go to 50. Okay. And then we did 50. And that's where we're at right now. And so I feel like I feel good about 50. And I'm going to slowly build the book together. I'm going to put together the pages and do everything. And it could take like a year. It could take two years, whatever. I'm in no hurry anymore. You know what I mean? And uh, I think that's the best way to go about it. Uh, my my best friend, Dan, he did the same thing. You know, he's slow, slow turning, you know? Yeah. And uh, he built LMS over like the span of 10 years. And it's starting to really pick up some steam in, in the film industry finally, right? Mm -hmm. And... Again, just slow burning. You know, don't worry okay. about like trying to make it amazing in, in a year, five months, and try to use all these different platforms to try to get it done. No, just take your time, do it organically. You know, enjoy your life, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Because okay. uh, there's no reason to rush. Trust me, there really isn't. Okay, because like I, I uh, there was recently an animation festival here. Uh -huh. And uh, while I was there, I actually pitched, like, my, I guess my animation idea to some people. Oh, cool. Yeah, and, like, I had some good feedback from it. So I was just wondering, like, how would I be able to, like, push that kind of further and, like, actually... Make the animation? Build it? Yeah. Like, That's nothing, thing, nothing like... works better than actually showing people, right? You can pitch it, you can talk about it, but if you mm -hmm. actually have, like, a fucking five-minute short of your animation that speaks volumes mm -hmm. you know what i mean and take your time just do it just take your time like have you seen this the leviathan short 
No, actually, I haven't. But I, I saw Ash Thorpe's uh, Lost Boy. Yeah, story that's a great back. example, too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. He did it all from self-funding. He just saved tons of money and just did it. You know? It took him, like, a two years almost, I think, to do that, like, that short film. Okay. So I sent you, I sent you a... But then before that, it took him, like, several years, uh, a few years of developing the actual idea and the characters around it, right? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, in terms of, like, being a concept artist, should I, like, focus on actually trying to, like, get people to make the animation? Or should I just, like, go play by my strengths and just do the concept art for it and then kind of, like, show it around to people and see if anyone's interested in helping? Whatever makes that? sense for you, man. It's a journey that you'll you'll start to discover. Sometimes it is a little combination of you you working with other people that fill the dream, and you guys work together as a team, or or maybe you just become a accomplished artist through concept art, and you make enough money to save and actually pay people to help you build it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I mean that short that I sent you is like a, a good example that directors uh, saving his money and spending it on. Building a short. Blur, uh, Tim from Blur, he put together, um, what you call it, um, a, a Deadpool kind of sample reel to show the, the to, to people. And for a long time, Hollywood was just like, whatever about it. And then he just released, he leaked it on uh, YouTube, I believe it was, or Vimeo, or online, whatever, yeah. it doesn't matter where. And people lost their minds. Oh, man, oh, God, that's amazing. And then, you know, they obviously were like, oh, yeah, let's make a Deadpool movie. And then he's like, I can make that movie for like very little money, and he did, and it was amazing, right? Again, it's just like, and it's like the, one of the safest ways to do it. It just is the safest way. There's like no stakes, because it's just like you just put time and effort into it, and it comes your baby. Game of Thrones has been around for decades, and it's only starting to pick up some traction, right? In the last several years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. George R. Martin had it for for years. Lord of the Rings, too, right? Yeah, it was, like, way, way back. Yeah. Uh, J.R. Token is not even alive around anymore for it. He wasn't, he wasn't able to enjoy that legacy that uh, Peter Jackson has created of that franchise. You know? So, like, I'm just saying, Marvel, like, Stan Lee is... Like you might, it's safe to say that this is the golden age for Marvel movies, right? And Stanley's like in his nineties. Like if you love it, that's all that matters. Like just put your heart into it. Okay. And it might never come to fruition, you know, but that should be okay. Like you made it and you're happy with it. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of these people who've made these IPs and made tons of money off of them um, don't necessarily are happy when they make all that money. A uh, notch from Minecraft is a great example of this. Yeah, that's true. He's like super rich now. He's like, I just want to make games. Yeah, he's trying to get back to what he was when he wasn't rich and famous. So just remember that. Stick to your roots. Try to find ways to just not necessarily um, get disappointed if you don't get it sold. That might actually be better. Yeah, like I, I, I even told my friend Kalen, who was helping me make this this book, I was like, you know, people approach us and they want to license it for movies and stuff. I, I'd say let's do it. Like, I don't have any interest of keeping this IP or making millions, and millions of dollars. <laughs> you know, I just want to have ownership so that way we don't get screwed, screwed. But at the same time, people can definitely take it. <laughs> you know, I don't care to have a legacy like that. Um, the only kind of legacy that I care about is the people that I've, you know, educated and more importantly, that my kids grow up loving me as a father. That's really the only thing I care about right now. And that's why I got to go so I can play with my kids right now. <laughs> All right. Um, but great question. Is there any last questions? I'll take one more and then um, go. I'll answer it quickly. I got one. Yeah, go for it, man. All right. The final question, my question. <laughs> my question is the best question. My question it is the best question. When are you going to Photoshop well? I saw that. I, I was thinking about it. 
<laughs> People need to get back to work. That's what I'm saying. Like, what are they doing, man? Especially my friend Steve Palmerton. Steve, especially Steve Palmerton. He's done too many, dude. He's done like a hundred. Like, it's okay if you do like one or two. That's fun. Right? I, I think I'm gonna do one too because it's funny. It's but, funny. but, uh, but yeah. has a real question going. But Steve, like, yeah, get back to work, Steve. You're gonna get fired. <laughs> All right. I'll let you guys go. Cool. Love you guys. Take care. Have a great All weekend. Right. Thanks, AJ. Yeah, be, 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 uh, hang out with each other. Try to support each other throughout the weekend. And we'll see you guys next week. Have fun. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.